Hey, thanks for dropping by to the Planners on Purpose podcast, created by Naomi Tucker, CMP. Now, this space is for the event planners to encourage and empower you so that you can fully live your life on purpose. So before we dig in, please take a moment to subscribe so you get future shows. Now, here she comes, your host, Naomi. Welcome to the Planners on Purpose podcast. I'm Naomi Tucker. I'm your coach, your host, and I'm excited to have special guest Bill Hansen with us today. Bill is a Florida celebrity hospitality icon and has an amazing amount of knowledge over his 50 year plus experience, 42 of which are in his own company, Bill Hansen Luxury Catering. Over the past Four decades, he's planned thousands of events in probably just as many venues and has hosted events for U.S. presidents, championship Super Bowl teams, countless celebrities, athletes, including Pope John, Paul II, the Bush family, Usher, and Kim Kardashian. His list goes on, and I don't want to give too much away because I'm sure Bill will take us on some of his journey, but certainly wanted to give him a big warm welcome. Welcome so much, Bill, to the Planners on Purpose podcast. Thank you, Naomi. I'm happy to be here. I always like to joke at my age, I'm happy to be anywhere. So it's a good thing. (laughs) Well, we're happy to have you here. Again, you've had such an extensive career, and I know it would probably take a long time for us to go over absolutely everything that you have done, but I would love for you to give listeners a bit of history on how your company came to be and where you are now. Well, wonderful. The company was founded in 1980. Before that, I was an officer in the Navy. I'm a graduate of of Cornell Hotel School, and I grew up in a small town near Buffalo, New York. So starting in 1980, I I was able to land a, a position where I was the caterer to members of the Miami Club. Miami Club at the time, back in 1980, was Miami's most prestigious luncheon club. So I rubbed elbows with the who's who of Miami back then. And that initially allowed me to to not only cater for them at the club, but also cater for them at other venues. So the first event I catered was a corporate event at at Villa Vizcaya in Miami. And since then, I probably worked there 500, 600 times since oh, wow. then. So, yeah, so it's been a good, it's been a good ride. I've been really blessed. That's great. That's, that's amazing. So in your company, what made you decide to say, hey, let me give entrepreneurship a try and move forward in that direction? Well, I've always been an entrepreneur. When I was a kid, I sold wreaths door to door, mailing mailing labels door to door. I was uh, I operated every concession in my fraternity house, so the entrepreneur drive was always there. But like everything, everything in the Lord's timing, and so there was never an opportunity until nineteen late nineteen seventy nine, when I was asked to interview for them a position to be the caterer for the Miami Club. So that's Mm -hmm. how it all started. And then it just grew into other off-premise events. And I was able to to find a very wonderful wedding venue, corporate venue called Villa Woodbine in Coconut Grove. So we started catering there in 1983. And I'm still there, still there catering. 40 years later. So it's been been a good ride so far. I'm 78 and ready to keep going and will work until I can't work anymore. So that's great. I I love that. I love just your passion for just continuing to keep going and keep moving and that the stability of your business. What, tell me about how your history of being in a hotel management, I believe it was program at Cornell. I would love to know about how that helped to mold your experience in stepping out on your own or even just in the hospitality industry. Well, obviously that was a great 
great experience while I attended Cornell. I must confess I wasn't the world's best student because I had to work my way through college, so I didn't get the best grades, but I always liked to joke. I, I was in the half of the class that made the top half possible. So <laughs> that was good. So I learned a lot, made some connections. I, I met an entrepreneur who owned a restaurant on Cape Cod called Christopher Ryder House, and I worked there for two summers. So I kind of was able to hone my skills a little bit. I've always been a good people person. I'm very good at that. And then from there, I went into, went into the Navy, and there it was huge. I was 23 years old. I was running an officer's club back then that was grossing a million dollars a year. It was incredible. And plus, I oversaw the work and the, the Navy stewards who operated a 148-room hotel. All of this was in Monterey, California. So I, I never really, other than education, I never really worked in a chain operation. I, You know, a lot of people will go to work for Hilton or Marriott or a restaurant company and have training. I I was just thrown into this club with 180 employees and everything going on, and I figured it out myself. I made a lot of mistakes, but over the years, I pretty much corrected the majority of them. Yeah. What would you say would be the characteristics of what you needed? Like, what were the key components that you needed yourself in order for you to do what you just said, get, well, get through it? I was blessed with the people skills, so that wasn't a problem. I need to I needed to learn how to deal with employees and quite frankly, that's a never ending education because every every time you end up with a with a new a new situation. But really I think what's helped me the most was the accounting and the budgeting I learned at Cornell because that has helped me know how to run the money. There's a lot of people that go into business that don't have, don't know a debit from a credit or QuickBooks from another book, the Bible, for example. So that's really helped me because I'm very astute in numbers and keeping track and knowing, knowing the profitability of each event. So to me, I'm kind of a businessman I did, I did everything myself. When I first started, like so many people, I was hands-on. I answered the phone. I talked to the brides. I scheduled the staff. I did everything that needed to be, needed to be done, and I did it all myself until about 2003. And then I began to assemble a, a group of people to augment what my late partner, Bill, and my wife, Terry, had built over those years from 1980 up until, you know, the mid early 2000s. So. Wow. That's a long time to do everything <laughs> uh, um, kind of by yourself. I know you had other people helping you, but before you scaled, you're saying like in 2000, you know, that you actually went that whole time? Yeah, we did everything wow. ourselves. We were probably more profitable back then because we were working every event so we didn't we had very you know our payroll was limited so now now with the new companies i actually now own four catering companies which serve the broad spectrum of the market from ultra luxury down to budget and then middle ranges in between and that's something that's brand new. I don't know of any other caterer in the United States that does that, that actually has different brands that will virtually meet the need of every client that comes to us, depending, regardless of their budget. Yeah, I think, I think that's absolutely amazing. It's just just amazing job to do this. I think it's quite extraordinary, really. And you said a few things that I felt was just important to call out. Like you mentioned how you had to get really good at working with people. 
I was reading a book. I don't know which book it was, but it was talking about how Charles Schwab was in a similar way. He wasn't all that kind of a pro at what he was doing in terms of the financial aspect, but he was really good with people. So I Mm -hmm. found that that was a great correlation between your story and his, how you're so good with people. And I think that's amazing. It's something that we need in the industry. And then how the financial backbone of what you do was really important and attributing Cornell to that. So I thought that that was really great because most people that get into the hospitality industry or the events industry, they don't always see that foundation of having some of that work done or have the knowledge of that being important to their success. So I think that's great that you pointed those things out. Exactly. I think one of the things that I've built my career on is nobody cares how much you know mm-hmm. until we know how much you care. And so we have a, a loving, caring attitude, not only with our clients, but within the three, 400 employees that work for me. So mm-hmm. we try to create that family feeling and, uh, and culture is my number one goal. It's Mm. not easy. Culture is an evolving situation, but we're working on it to make it even better. We'll try to be like family. So, yeah. Yeah, I love that. Family, culture, so important when there's so many businesses out there that are super cookie cutter. Would love to, I know we talked before this and you were telling me how your team read that Unreasonable Hospitality book and we also did a book club with that, with Planners on Purpose, but we'd love to hear a bit about what are some aspects to hospitality that you find important, especially with all the experience that you have had and how you've been able to maintain such a wonderful culture at your company. Well, I think the, the first element is attention to detail. We are basically the Navy SEALs of the hospitality world because we... I'm sitting in one of my commissaries right now in the tasting room. And so what we have to do is we have to select everything we need to take take to the event, get it on a truck, drive it over, build a kitchen. And it's really one little thing. If you don't have it, you're, you're in deep trouble. So it has to be detail-oriented. It has to be customer-focused. One of the things that I, I will do anything to make the customer happy. I will do anything within reason as long as they're willing, willing to pay for it. That, to me, is a, a huge issue. So, And I guess, you know, just lo- <clears throat> excuse me, loving what you do and having engaged there's a difference between engaged workers and happy workers. You can have happy workers, but they're not engaged because they just come in and it's all fun. But engaged people, believe it or not, sometimes engaged staff members aren't happy because they're so engaged, they want to change things. So we work for engagement. It's only been it's only about 20% of the people across the board have employees that are engaged. 20% of the employees are, are engaged. And I hope that in my company we're doing better than that. It's kind of hard to measure it. But it's all, it's all about people. We're in a people business. and We have to take care of our people. Absolutely. And I love how you shared how you're taking care of your your people, making sure that they're engaged, but then also taking care of your your clients as well. So I think that's very important. How have you seen just within your company, just, just switching gears a little bit about social events, about hospitality events? How are you seeing the industry right now in terms of the demand? Are you seeing that they're definitely back plus more, or do you see them still struggling a bit on your end? Well, the weddings have always, people will get married regardless of the economy. And as soon as COVID was over in 2022, we had a huge backload of weddings. So 
This year, we are running a little bit behind last year, as are most of the competitors that I've talked to. We're, we're about 5% behind where we were last year at the same time, but in the same token, for next year, we're 5% ahead of where we were last year for this year. So we're, we're, we're doing quite well there. What has impacted us the most is the corporate clientele. We have seen a very deep decline in the number of corporate events that are coming to South Florida. A lot of times the destination management companies just are not getting the number of clients that they used to used to get. And we have a great relationship with all the major DMCs here in South Florida. And that's kind of been a, it hasn't been as good this year as last year. However, we're seeing that next year there's going to be a pickup in corporate events, barring any unforeseen things that are happening in the world right now. That's good. I mean, that that's really good to see that things are looking for getting a little bit better. And what are some of the trends that you're seeing now out there in the social event world? Well, the the main thing I see in the wedding world is that Every bride, I, I like to say, they want it my way right away and why pay? And, and the my way is obviously the most important. You cannot give a, a boilerplate proposal and expect them to say, oh, that sounds good. When I started, I would speak to couples. This was even before we had wedding planners. And I'd say, what would you like for your you know, wedding meal? And, Oh, Bill, whatever you think will be fine. So we usually went with Caesar salad, some honey coconut shrimp, sliced tenderloin, and that was it. But now every couple is very particular about what they want. So we have my executive chef, Dewey Lasasso, has been really good at creating menus to please any any palate, regardless. You know, we've had one I we did a Turkish wedding the other a couple weeks ago. We've done some Haitian wedding, a Haitian wedding with some influence, with some French influence. So we pretty much can adapt to the needs of the client. And we also provide Indian catering where we subcontract with an Indian caterer friend of mine. And we do everything except the food. And then also kosher catering. For weddings, we we have two good, great kosher partners that we work with, so we can pretty much, you know, create the menu the way that the client wants. One of the things that I'm encountering, which is, I don't know, it's a little challenging, but for many couples, food is not the most important thing. The bar might be most important. That that first look, you know, behind me are all these charger plates. And that first look is so important because because of Pinterest and the other social media platforms, a lot of couples are really interested in the look of the event. Even more, they'll spend a lot of money on on the look, the flowers, the music and Food is the last thing they, they think of. So we've had to be able to adjust our, our approach. One of the things that we do do now is we sell other services that we include in our bill. So we put a DJ, we can put a DJ in our invoice, and we, we generally get a 10% discount, and then we put a we have a 22.5% service charge, so we put that on top. And the other thing we've done that, to me, is revolutionary is we've created the Hanson Group, which is the four catering companies that I mentioned previously. We have a venue resource website where people can go and look for venues throughout South Florida. That's called Bill Hanson Miami Venues. And then the Hanson Group is the umbrella organization for the four catering companies, the, the venue website, 
And we've recently introduced a concierge service where we will help couples find virtually any vendor that they need, even if they don't work, even if they don't work with us as catering. We'll help them find a planner at no charge. We'll help them uh, find the right florist for them. Uh, we're, we're really big on accommodations. We have some connections with uh, Airbnbs that are local. So we pretty much help, well, we'll help the client with anything, anything that they need. That's our complimentary concierge service. We just launched it a couple months ago. So we're, we're growing in that, in that regard. So yeah. that, that, and the other thing we're working on, if, if you're okay with this, is that I'm seeing that when we're dealing with late teens and early 20s, mid 20s, I think you will agree with me that they're more about doing things online. They would rather do their searching online rather than actually pick up the phone and call. That's something in my generation, that's what we always did. But now the younger people are trying to get everything that they can find online. And one of the things that we're finding is that when couples start shopping for weddings, they have no idea as to what things cost. So what we are creating here in South Florida under the Hanson Group is going to be something similar to the Amazon shopping cart where you you know click on an item and then it goes over into the right hand column on Amazon and then it shows the price. So what we're working on is revolutionary. We're going to be able to take all of the venues that we work with in South Florida. They all have different prices. They all have different prices for days of the week, things like that. So we will have this back of the house program. So let's say they select a, a venue, let's take Vizcaya. But when they click on Vizcaya, that over on the other line will show the cost of Vizcaya. Then they can go through and pick any one of the four caterers that I have. They can plug that in. They can even pick up floral proposals, what DJ proposals, and they actually can do their own shopping online. So they have a general idea as to what things are going to cost. Because I'm sure everybody in this business has encountered the same thing as me. You know, no people have no clue. And then when they find out that a wedding is going to cost a lot more mm -hmm. than a dinner at a restaurant with a couple of drinks, they're, they're totally shocked. So what we're trying to do is help them, help them as a service. You know, I always say serve before you sell. Help them with a service so they can get a general idea of what things, what things are going to cost them. So they're not embarrassed when they call up and they have a $10,000 budget and the Vizcaya budget is for 60000 or 80000 or 100000 So yeah. that, that we're going to hopefully launch this coming year. I, th I think that's great. I, I mean, I, we are in this technology kind of enhanced environment where people definitely are looking to use those type of tools when it comes to businesses. And there's definitely a need for that, especially in the industry. So what you're working on is definitely revolutionary. And I am excited to see how that how that goes for you and would love to continue to hear updates on how that goes because it, you know, it makes it easy for people to go ahead and pick what they want and put it, let's say, in a cart and do any necessary follow-ups later. And at least like you mentioned, be able to give them a detail on how things look in terms of their financial spend. Something else you mentioned too was just how the customization of of an event is certainly important right now when it, to the food, to the decor and everything, especially with food. People aren't picking from a predetermined menu anymore. It sounds like it's more custom. So being prepared for what those custom custom needs are is really important. It sounds like you have a great deal of help with the with your chef. 
do you find that social media too drives the trend for them wanting it custom because everyone's putting things on Instagram, snapping their shots of their wedding and how they've had it? I'm pretty sure you can, that might relate to how you're seeing that. Yes, 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 Mm -hmm. yes. It's unbelievable. Yeah. People come in with it. It used to be the couples back in the 80s and 90s, they'd come in with a big binder. It was probably Uh four or five inches high and they had everything about their wedding in the binder. Mm -hmm. Those days are gone and their, their opportunity to come up with better ideas and better presentations and better menus and better drinks. It's all inspired by, by the internet now Mm -hmm. and social media. However, the one thing that we all need to really indulge in and learn as much as we can is AI. AI is going to change the way all of us do business. There's so many things in AI that we can do that can help with writing proposals, help help with planning menus, help with drinks. AI is going to change the way uh, we work. I don't know how, how familiar you are with it. Oh, I, just, I was w- in a seminar yesterday where an AI expert really unloaded on us and and I think we can find a lot of answers through chat GPT or whatever else, whatever else we use. You can look for, for anything. Somebody told me the other day that they put in Bill Hansen catering and, and my name, Bill Hansen, and this huge report came out about me and it was all good. It was all good. But AI as a research tool, as a as a planning tool, as a grow growth tool, is going to be probably the way we do business in the future. So yeah, I agree. And I mean, we've had a, a, a lot of experts like yourself come on this podcast and talk about AI. How the the event professional definitely needs to embrace it. If your company isn't learning it right now, it's probably a be- good good thing that you do in your own time, at least learn it because it will be very relevant in the future. I kind of see this whole wave of technology being similar to what happened when Blockbuster Video, you know, had a choice whether to continue how they're doing it or do something similar to like Netflix and how that just didn't work out well for them. I feel like AI definitely is, is, is going to bring about that same wave. So it's definitely going to be changing for our business and our industry. As an aside, back in the 90s, I actually, you mentioned Blockbuster. The owner of that, that company was John Melk, M-E-L-K. He ended up owning Fisher Island later on, but we catered his, his daughter's wedding at the Sky, and it was a spectacular, spectacular affair. And what was really nice is there was a few bottles of Dom Perignon left after the wedding. <laughs> guess, who, guess who consumed it? Myself <laughs> and my staff. So. I wonder who. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we have a couple more questions. My my last question for you before we, we wrap up is, you've, you've done this for so many years. How have you been able to maintain your passion just continue to keep focused and keep going and not tapping out. How have you been able to do that all of these years? What what can what inspiration can you give those that are wanting to aspire to do the same? Well, here's the key. Here's the key. And I've seen the opposite where people that have been in business a long time, they do not adapt to what's happening in the future. So I have two main rules. I like to hire people that are smarter than me in all capacities. I mean, I don't, I'm not a chef, but Dewey's a chef, and we have a team of chefs. That's number one. And then number two is we, we have, I, I've taught a catering class at FIU since 1990, off again, off again on again. But I, I've hired a lot of young people, the 20-somethings, and watched them grow because they know 
what the clientele wants. They have a better feeling for what's going on. And they, they're, I mean, for me to try to sell a bride right now, I might be able to sell her grandmother, but I don't think I can sell a bride because I'm, that's just not what I do. But a, one of my top eight salespeople can all sell, sell brides because they're more in that age group and more attuned to what's going on. Plus, they've got a great product to sell with what we offer. So, Yeah. Thank you. I love I love to hear that. It's just all about all about adapting with the times, changing with the times, and then also hiring great people beside you. So I love that. So before we wrap, I have one question for you. It's just hoping that you can delight us in the answer. It's just kind of one of those questions. And it's what was one of your favorite celebrity or venue experiences that you've had to date? I know it's hard and you have a lot of them probably, but if you were to share one of it with us, what it, would it be? Of course, it was September of 1987. Mm. And the Pope John Paul II and President and Mrs. Reagan were to meet at the Skya Museum and Gardens for a press conference. And my team and myself, we were selected to provide some of the catering. It was nothing real elaborate, but it was some, something that they could nosh on, nibble on. And of course, we had Secret Service all over us. And to say that we catered for the Pope and the president and the president's wife on the same day to me was uh, spectacular. I still have a few pictures from, from, from that job. And that was back in the days when I was working myself and I can still remember carrying cases and cases of soft drinks uh, over a half a mile because we couldn't access the sky from, with a truck. I had to, I had to walk everything in from uh, Mercy Hospital next door. It was uh, just unbelievable. It was, we worked hard, and it was a great, great, great treat. Hmm. Thank you for sharing. What an amazing memory! And you know, we we work hard for what we do. So I think that's just really great that you were gifted with that experience. So thank you for sharing, and thank you so much for being here. Before we officially wrap, I would love for you to share with everyone how someone would want to connect with you after this podcast or connect with your company, where would they find you? Real easy, www.billhanson.com. So it's B-I-L-L-H-A-N-S-E-N.com. And they can also call my mobile number, which is all over the place. And I answer it, 5 1897 Perfect. Thank you. Thanks for making yourself available. Thank you for doing this. It was so great talking to you. You just have a wealth of information. You're so, so charming. And I just really appreciate you being here. Thanks so much for joining Thank us you, today. Dear. Take Thank care. Thank you. Take care. You. Thank you. Well, that wraps it up for this episode. If you enjoyed the conversation, hit the like button and tell us how much you enjoyed the show by leaving a message in the comments. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next time. We'll be right back.